and we can get this whole thing started. Awesome. Give it up one more time for Grace. I love your outfit. Get on out of here because we got a panel to start. You feeling ready, fans? I said you feeling ready? Amazing. Then, folks, please go wild, go crazy for Claire Kramer. City Comic Con 2019! Have you guys had a good day? I can't really hear you. Have you guys had a good day? Who wants to talk about Star Wars Rebels? Please welcome to the stage James Arnold Taylor! Welcome to Seattle. Well, Thank you. Yes. Hello, hello. How's everybody? Yeah. They, let me tell you something. The yeah. Seattle Aussie audience is an awesome audience. Aren't so, they? Though? Yeah. You bet. The you guys are. is very strong with them. I sense it. Yes. <laughs> Let's jump right in because this is billed as the Star Wars Rebels panel, but you guys have such extensive voice careers and you guys work together a lot. Oh, come on. So, I mean, come on. I can give you a compliment. So I just want to sort of kick it off by a little bit of how you each got into the industry in general, and when did you realize you had this really unique talent for voices? Mm, you want to go first? Ladies first? Please. Okay, sure. Uh, well, I uh, went to Princeton, I majored in English, and I wanted to write. I love stories. I love telling stories. I love reading stories. I love watching them. And um, I ended up getting into graduate acting school, and uh, I love doing stand-up comedy and stuff like that and sketch comedy characters and uh, when I moved back to Los Angeles I was uh, in a one-woman show that I had written with a bunch of different characters and a voiceover agent came to see the show and said you know you might want to try voiceover animation and I went in and I read for her and I've been at that agency ever since and it was just a really good fit uh, for me I, I love the theater and I, I don't pursue on-camera acting but there's a certain kindness and um, just a loveliness about people in the world of voiceover that uh, the world of on-camera can be a little um, rough, if you will. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, if someone doesn't like my voice, I can live with that a little bit more than like, no, your entire essence is awful, like get out of my office, <laughs> which, <laughs> which yeah, it's, it's hard not to take that personally. <laughs> Well, um, I mean, there's also, I imagine, something really freeing being a voice actor because yeah. you're not tethered to, you know, Well, your here's looks. the other thing. I grew up, my mom was on a show called Knots Landing in Dallas. Uh, her name is Joan Van Ark. And so I watched her. She was on that show for 13 years, every Thursday night. And I would watch people come up to her and say, you know, oh, I love you, this and that. And I would sit there, you know, at the pizzeria as this kid, and then my mom would say, it's paying for your college. Okay, all right. But I, but I saw how she somewhat sacrificed her privacy to a certain extent to be in the public eye, and that's sort of the contract that you sign when you, you know, step into that world. Whereas in voiceover, I just have Star Wars family, so it's awesome. Like, there's one guy at the Albertsons where I shop, and he, he had a Boba Fett keychain, and I said, yo, man, where'd you get that? It's like, well, what's going on? And ever since then, we're like besties. So those are my fans. <laughs> it's kind of like an inside club, you know? A little yeah. bit. And, and it, it just feels safe and like, you know, we all love each other. Well, I know they're Sith and Jedi and we have our, our various views on things. And now it's even more complicated. If you want to get into Qui-Gon, like, let's just, we'll keep it simple. But anyway, bottom line, uh, I prefer somewhat the anonymity that you find in the world of voiceover. And then the people at cons are sort of the demographic, and those are my friends anyway. So it's, it's again, a very good fit. That's awesome. Very well said as well. Yeah. <laughs> and she is amazing, isn't she? Amazing? Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> One of the nicest, most humble people you'll get to work with, and it's been awesome through all the years we've got to work together. I uh, I didn't go to Princeton or any fancy thing at all. I, I, since I was four years old, I knew I wanted to be a voice actor. So I started studying very hard by watching a lot of cartoons and reading a lot of comic books. And uh, and I, I really just loved it. I saw Mel Blanc and Don Messick and all these guys, and I said, I want to do that. I want to be those guys. 
And so I started as a stand-up comic as well at 16, and then I got into a local radio station. I went in there and said, how do you get into radio? Of course, I was 17, so I went, how do you get into radio? And, um, and I started sweeping up. And then I would watch the DJs as they were doing their shows. And I would hang out, and I, would, I learned all the production room stuff, and I just loved all of the sound of it. And so uh, within a year, it was like getting out, out of a movie. The overnight DJ didn't show up, and they called me, all right, kid, you're on. And I got on the, oh, on the radio, you know, and I, I did a show, and then the rest is history. I became a, a DJ and then did comedy and uh, did uh, voiceover for a radio network for 3,000 stations from Howard Stern to Rick Dees and all these people, and, um, and I was kind of behind the scenes. So I, I got used to it. Being a voice actor, you're never really in the forefront unless you come to a Comic-Con. And so uh, from there, my career, some of the first stuff I did was doubling Michael J. Fox. Well, wait a second, Doc. You mean to tell me you built the time machine? Yeah. Out of a DeLorean? Uh, and then of course- That is so awesome, by the way. Thank you. And then like, I got the double just... Doc yeah. Brown uh, for the video game. The way I see it, Marty, if you're gonna build a time machine into a car, why not do it some style? <laughs> oh, yes. uh, so I started doubling a lot of celebrities uh, when they were not available to do their own voice. So Captain Jack Sparrow, I would do Johnny Depp. I would do Christopher Walken, you know. It's crazy, if he wasn't able to do his own voice, I come in, I do it, it's great. <laughs> and so uh, I found, you know, my family. Like you say, you find all these other people. I was just, up, well, downstairs with Nolan North and Ross Marquand, you know, doing these voices. We're Insanity all doing is going on downstairs. <laughs> but, uh, so we just all, click and again you'll never find a more humble and happy to be there group than voice actors we're all realizing that we have the greatest job in the world i think and that's probably it so when you're creating a character it's a little bit of a different process i would imagine than when you're doubling as an actor so let's take first the doubling because like literally those voices sound spot on how do you find that what do you do to prep for like michael j fox or chris um, mcglover well, it's, you know, so for, for me, I've always been, and I've been a voice double. The difference between a voice double and an impersonator, an impersonator will take a voice and kind of over-exaggerate it. Dana Carvey is a great example, and he admits it. So if he was doing Johnny Carson, he would do this, that is, that is wild, isn't that wild? But, but if you're gonna do Johnny Carson, his voice is down here, and half the room doesn't know who Johnny Carson is. <laughs> so I will just picture the person in my head, and then it'll come out like Jay Baruchel is Hiccup Haddock. Well, I'm also Hiccup. So most of the time when you're hearing Hiccup, unless it's the movies, and you hear uh, Jay Baruchel talking, that's not actually him, it's, it's me. So you see, you just picture the person in your head and then they come out of your mouth. It's just magic. I, I really don't know how to explain it other than that. Well, it's a true talent, obviously. I got one thing I'm good at. You know? <laughs> Embrace it. How about you? What's your process? Well, I usually listen to their voices over and over again, um, and then I, I never think I sound like the person at all, and, but people are like, oh, that's spot on. I've, I've doubled for Angelina Jolie. Uh, the movie Gone in 60 Seconds is mostly my voice. I, I wish I could be Angelina Jolie just for a day. I mean, her humanitarian efforts alone are, are staggering, but if I look like Angelina Jolie, oh. Yeah, that was just for five minutes. Yes, you know. Um, yeah, I've lost 70 pounds, so I think if you've ever... Yeah, thanks. Uh, you are gorgeous yeah. just the way you are. Oh, you don't need you. to look like Angelina thanks. Jolie. Well, no, the weird thing is, is that if you've ever been uh, overweight, when it, even when you lose the weight, it's almost like it follows you around, like you never quite feel... I mean, now I, I view myself as an athlete. Not to have TMI here, but I'll just break it down. Um, but, uh, you know, y you never quite feel like Angelina Jolie. <laughs> I mean, she's just an amazing human being. But anyway, if you watch Gone in 60 Seconds, uh, you're pretty much listening to my voice. And I've done uh, Tilda Swinton and uh, Elizabeth Hurley, um, Son Sandra Bullock. Uh, I, I don't have sort of little catchphrases to wow you with their, <laughs> with, with their voices. But I usually just listen to their voice and then uh, repeat it back. I have a good ear. I, I was mimicking people growing up all the time. My mom, for example, is... Uh, she says she can't drink coffee. She's an odd. She, okay, look, if she's on a soap opera for 13 years, this is how she enters the kitchen. Oh, God. No, baby, no. Oh, what, Mom? What is it? I can't drink that. It's not piping hot. 
So like I, my whole life I was like building a case like, I'm, I'm sorry, but if that came down into your kitchen, wouldn't you be like, what is going on in our country? You know? So that then became a tool to be used in terms of, you know, voice matching other humans. There you go. That is awesome. You know, uh, my one time I met your mom, we had the same dentist. Oh my God. And, and she my, loves her dentist. My she dentist, talks about him. Yeah, he always loves me doing Johnny Carson. Oh, so awesome. he goes, you know, Johnny Carson's here. This was a long time ago. And, yeah. and, and Johnny Carson's here. She was so excited, you know, because she knew Johnny and all. And I come in and she was so deflated. But, that, <laughs> but I did Johnny Carson for her. And she's like, yeah, it's not bad. Yeah. <laughs> Although she, I guess she went, oh, that's well, not God, bad. Oh, God, it's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, you have to give it the, you know, the punch. No, well, I've actually, I take her voicemail messages and I make dance mixes out of them. They're, they're pretty spectacular. I did one that's this Afro-Brazilian mix that is just, it's pretty epic. I think I might have to start a blog that's like my mom's messages. You definitely messages. need to share those on like your you know Twitter or Instagram. Some of them are like, oots, 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 you know, oh, God. <laughs> Because it, it's just, it, she's not even reaching for it. It's just who she is. She's just very um, committed to that genre. It's awesome. <laughs> so, James, when you uh, became the voice of Obi-Wan, how did you follow, you know, obviously Ewan McGregor and, and Sir Alec, and there's lots of, you know, recognizable voices. So how did you create your own iteration? Yeah, um, so it's been almost 18 years now that I've been the voice Ooh. of Obi-Wan Kenobi in one way or another. That is crazy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, the craziest part is, is I'm a voice actor, and here I've voiced more Obi-Wan and portrayed him in more ways than, than Ewan or Alec combined, yet people go, oh, it's, oh, it's the voiceover Obi-Wan. Okay, great. No, but uh, Ewan, um, so I started doubling him when they were still making the movies, and, and I had doubled him for some other things before where he has an American accent. So when Ewan McGregor puts on an American accent, he kind of places everything up front, yeah. in the front of his mouth, because he's trying to hide his, his accent, which he's, of course, Scottish. And uh, so I thought, well, if I do the reverse and just put a British accent on and think of Alec Guinness doing, these aren't the droids you're looking for. <laughs> but think of it in a younger way, these aren't the droids you're looking for. Anakin. All right, well then, so I just <laughs> thought, oh, I'll do it now. That's worth applause. <laughs> but, the thing that, so I was doing it for uh, the micro series of the Clone Wars, which was a fantastic series, the micro series. If you don't know it, check it out. It's great stuff. And um, then they were making the Revenge of the Sith video game at the same time as the movie. So they came in and they brought this uh, laptop, top secret laptop, and they had all this um, footage of the, the film. And I was talking about this yesterday, but they showed me the uh, Mustafar scene. But it was all blue screen. And it was Ewan McGregor standing on a blue screen, and he was going, You are the chosen one! Yeah. It was said that you would destroy the Sith, not join them! Bring balance to the Force, <laughs> not leave it in darkness! You are my brother, Anakin! I loved you! And I went, oh boy, that's awesome. I can't wait to see it when there's lava and everything. <laughs> and they said, can you do that? And I said, well, I will do my best. And I did, uh, and they said, okay, because there's two layers to his voice. You know, he's got that, you look tired because of your mother. Dreams pass in time. You must be mindful of the false Anakin. And then he's got that, come to your senses. What would Padme do if she were in your position? So he's got those layers, mm -hmm. which Alec Guinness didn't ever get to. Right. You know, he got, run, Luke, run, you know. <laughs> <laughs> this is about as big as he needs. <laughs> so, so he was finding those layers, and, uh, and then now it's really humbling when people say, you know, I hear it in your, your voice now when I read Obi-Wan or something. Because I, what I try to do is I try to be homage to both of them. And so, so I you know, I started when I was first doing it. it, it was very much just you, and which is a little higher than what I do if you watch the Clone Wars. And then I tried to take a little of that. So when you watch the Clone Wars, it's really kind of a combination, and that's what it is. This is Obi-Wan for the Clone Wars, yeah, so there you go. That, that's awesome. Amazing, I love that. Vanessa, do you record with the rest of the cast, or, or on Rebels, or are you sort of yes. isolated? Oh, we, you do, we okay. were, um, For the most part, we were always together, unless um, Tia or Freddie or Taylor, they, uh, you know, they have on-camera careers. I was always available, because <laughs> I don't do that stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, for the most part, it, was always, it always was so much better. The only thing is, I never met Thrawn, and I never met Lando. So those are, I don't know how they put them together, because the, the Thrawn sees, they scared me to death. And I found it so crazy to think, 
well, basically they would do a billion different takes. And of course, I guess they knew what he had you know, given for the scene, but I had no idea what to expect. And then that organ music comes in and oh, oh my goodness, it was terrifying. Um, and, it, and it went, it sort of edited together perfectly. But um, yeah, I wish that they had been around. Um, I, I think uh, he was doing Dancing with the Stars at the time. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> Billy D was not available. I came in that day so excited. I got to punch Lando. What? Yeah. But I, you've worked with Billy D, have you not? Never. Never. At no. All? I've seen him at Fred Siegel. There's a place in LA called Fred Siegel, but I hyperventilated. I couldn't. Oh. I just couldn't. You should have gone up to him. He Come is on. one of no. the nicest people in the what world. What am I gonna say? I'm the one with the green brain tails. No. He would have known. He would have. No. Yeah, I, no, I couldn't. No, no way. Know. Billy D is great. Right, so I, could, I don't know. We did this event called Star Wars Weekends every year at Disney World, and I got to host this, and then Star Wars Celebration, which he was I amazing. And um, Billy D and I became very good friends from that. What? But he is like just the this sweetest guy. guy in the world, and he knows his stuff. The other thing that's amazing about him, if you watch Rebels, his voice sounds exactly the same as when he was young. I mean, yeah. he has the ability to just control that so well. So amazing. And he's an amazing artist as well. Look he's kind of art. like a quiet talker in real life, so he's like yeah. reserved. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the rest of you are fantastic. <laughs> That's what he would say. He's amazing. Yeah. That's awesome. All right, we're going to take questions. So I know you guys probably have a lot to ask. Get in line at the mics. And Whoa. while they get them, yeah, there's spotlights. Magic. Fancy. While they're getting lined up, obviously, everybody in here geeks out about stuff you guys have been a part of, Star Wars Rebels and different projects. What do you guys geek out about? What do you love? What are you passionate about? Could be literature, Star music, Wars. films. Uh, no. Well, pretty much Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> People come in my house and they're like, uh, you're a Star Wars fan. <laughs> because it's yeah. pretty much all over the place. Yeah. No, what, yeah, I mean, I, you know, so I, uh, I think I geek out about all of you is what I really, so I, I have a podcast and a YouTube channel now that I started really as a way to say thank you. Because You'll never find, you'll never find the more wretched hive. No, you'll never find uh, a greater group of people than Star Wars fans. And I'm not saying that just for cheap applause, although the cheap applause is nice. But uh, it's for you, it's for yourself. Um, so I really love trying to give back, and I think Vanessa is the same way. And I, you know, it's just, uh, it's wonderful to see that reaction. To pay it forward. That's awesome. Hi. Hi. CJ. Oh, hey, Vanessa, how, are how you doing? doing? Hey, he came to see me over where I'm signing autographs. Come say hi, you guys. Yeah, come say hi. After we're, this, we're, we're going to be at our table. You guys are going back downstairs we're going back. after this. They, All right. they extended the time there so you can still see us. Yeah, come say yeah. hi. Anyway. Uh, my question is for both of you. Uh, what were your favorite episodes of Clone Wars and Rebels, respectively? Good question. <laughs> wow. Do you want to think while yeah, I answer? No, you go ahead, yeah. Oh, there's so many, uh, then. I loved all the Mandalorian arcs with the Duchess of Teen, Anna Graves. Woo! Did a fantastic job. And, uh, and then, of course, the ones at the end, near the end there, where Darth Maul came in. And, uh, spoiler alert, yes. Uh, yeah, one of my favorite lines to deliver was, I'm so sorry. When, uh, I feel like I'm getting choked up. Okay, uh, yeah, when we all know what happens with the Duchess, but uh, and he meets his, her sister, but... Uh, those stories were just so powerful. And Sam Witwer as Darth Maul, big yeah. jerk. Um, <laughs> he's so great. So yeah, those were my favorites. Well, I, there are so many stories that I loved. And the, the, the Darth Mir uh, stuff was amazing. Um, but uh, I also, I love the stuff with Saw Gerrera, um, sort of much later, I think it was season five. Because I, at the time, was thinking, wow, those are sort of the seedlings of the Rebel Alliance, you know, when they're teaching them about the difference between rebellion and terrorism. And that distinction really stuck with me. Um, but, uh, yeah, anything with Asajj Ventress is always going to be my favorite. I just love her so much. I wish that she could have hung out with Hera. And I know, well, I mean, because <laughs> if she's... I, don't I know. smell a spinoff. <laughs> Absolutely. Sad I think so. there's a novel that kind of put the kibosh on that, but oh well, as far as the timeline goes. But anywho, um, yeah, and the, the Rebels, I'll never forget that moment when Kanan, uh, we've all seen season four, spoiler alert, spoiler, spoiler alert. plug your ears if you haven't. They, they should be up to date. When, when, I would hope so, but uh, when Kanan passes and his eyes uh, turn blue and, uh, you know, that moment was, was 
pretty special. But there were so many. I mean, the fight between Ahsoka and Darth Vader. I mean, you know, even the one with the Inquisitor. There's always a great battle at the end, right? Um, but uh, there were so many moments. Even uh, the music when the wolves came back um, and were fighting. I've never heard music like that. It was almost like a marching band. Kevin Kiner just scored. Yeah, he was just an absolute genius. So it's really tough to choose. <laughs> Yeah, I loved I loved all of them really. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. When did you guys find out that season four was going to be the last for Rebels? Right in the middle yeah. of of doing it. Yeah, I think Freddie had just died, and um, <laughs> that could be well, an indicator. You know. Yeah. Well, you know, it's weird. I found out after the fact that Freddie was campaigning to die the entire time. I was like. Wow, way to want to work with us. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, no, thanks. And I and I found out he was trying to get Darth Vader to kill him. And I, and Dave, Dave was like Dave was like, no, that's not happening. Um, but I guess he granted him his wish. Not that he wanted to not be in the show, but he wa he felt that that would be an elegant end for Kanan. And then, you know, as I mentioned, Qui Gon before, there are many options for him as a Jedi moving forward. We don't know. I mean, obviously, passing doesn't necessarily mean that. But um, I'm, that's not a. I'm not. <laughs> giving you any it's not a spoiler yeah no um but anyway uh yeah that's it was in the middle of four seasons i remember tia was so sad i have been doing this since 1997 so when things end it's like it was a good run you know yeah, you get used to it well the yeah, and you're grateful for whatever moments that you had but tia was really upset yeah when when clone wars was canceled after disney moment of silence Star wars, um and they went, yeah, we don't need that show again. <laughs> then you all spoke up, and they went, oh, I guess we need to bring that show Yes, yeah, so how about um, that, right? So, it's yeah. Yeah. so uh, yeah, we get a seventh season, which is great. But when it was canceled, we had already recorded season seven and almost into season eight. And so now it was easy for them to bring it back in that we had recorded so much right. already. Uh, but they've also recorded some new things. And so, uh, yeah, but that was, that was a big... Uh, a big bummer, you know, because it's always, I think the biggest thing is to say goodbye to family, because we are family. I mean, the Rebels cast, they get together, they have dinner, it's, it's like weekly. Oh or my weekly. gosh, we eat a lot. <laughs> <laughs> we do, yeah. yeah and the, Why not? The Clone Wars cast, I mean, they, I mean, Matt and I are texting each other all the time, you know, it's Anakin and Obi-Wan, and <laughs> Catherine Tabor, Padme Amidala is like one of my best friends in the world, and Ashley's like my little sister, it's just, it's, it's a family, so yeah. Yeah. Hi. Hi guys, Justin from Lake Stevens. Hey, hey how are you? So, kind of a goofy little scenario for you. Would you mind improvising a little scene where Black Canary wants to learn to become a Jedi from Obi-Wan? <laughs> uh, well, all right, uh, so your name is Canary? Black Canary. Yes, well, I sense a, a dark side with you then, with that name. Well, I could scream. No, no, it's all right. So you want to, you want to learn the ways of the Jedi? Yeah, requires time. concentration mm. and also the ability to say this, Anakin. Anakin. And Anakin. 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 Well, I think you're, you're there. You're a Jedi. Well done. Thank you. Hi. Hi, I'm Alan. I'm from Iowa, which is actually relevant. Okay. Yes, because on the flight over from there, I was watching Teen Titans go to the movies. Hey, oh, hey, hey. I got to a point where I was like, oh, it's James Arnold Taylor as, as, as Shia LaBeouf. Shia LaBeouf, yeah, yes. Shia LaBeouf in that film. Did you, I was the uh, computer uh, for yes, the yes. yes. That's right, too. Yeah, see, again. Oh. Look at, we all come, we've worked together on so many things, we were sitting there. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Spectacular Spider-Man. Uh, Mary Jane and Harry Osborne, yeah. and uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, little cartoon you may know. Guardians yeah, of the Gamora. Galaxy, Gamora <laughs> and Yondu and uh, Cosmo, the Russian telepathic Cosmo. But yeah, so uh, yeah, Shia LaBeouf. Yeah, so the question is, do you have like a favorite little sort of hidden role that, that you love to, to tell people about? You probably have some good ones like that. Dave. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll talk then, will you? You can always talk. Uh, okay, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Well, uh, there was a video game I did when I first started voice acting called Dune. And uh, I had done some sort of, I don't know, wizard character, I'm not really sure. And they were stumped to cast this one, it could look like Jabba the Hutt. And I said, do you mind if I try? And they said, sure, whatever, lady. 
And I said, what have you talked like this? <laughs> and they said, you get in front of the microphone right now. <laughs> no female should make that sound. So, and I booked that job. I, I mean, I didn't take it away from anyone because they couldn't find anyone to act like that. I don't know. That awesome. that, that's an obscure reference. That is so awesome, though. Oh, um, boy. Well, you know, with the doubling of people, you do stuff and you're not really, it's not really supposed to be known that it's you. So, uh, in the Alice in Wonderland movies, uh, you know, Johnny Depp, he's singing the Mad Hatton. Oh, Alice, Alice, I was so happy to see you. And so I did a lot of, a lot of his stuff, uh, and you wouldn't know it, hopefully. Uh, but then uh, Christian Bale, I did his stuff for Batman, the first movie. And it was, it was all very dark and all of that. <laughs> and they went to do the video game, and they played him a trailer from the movie, and I guess half of the voice in it was me, and he didn't catch it. So, <laughs> That's amazing. So I thought, all right. Yeah. Well, there's, uh, the one, there's one I also did, I voice matched for Nicole Kidman, and, and she had an Australian accent, and I'm really not sure how that panned out for me. But um, they bought it. I don't know. <laughs> It was a, a, movie, a movie she did with Hugh Jackman a while ago. Good times. <laughs> thank you. Great thank question. You. Yeah, thank you. Hi. Hey, I'm Kevin from Bothell. This question's for Vanessa. Sure. On the Talking Tunes podcast, you started to tell Rob about your Star Wars room, but he cut you off. Would you mind telling us oh. about your Star Wars room? <laughs> well, we don't have like five hours, so... Uh, <laughs> yeah, let's just say it's its own vortex of goodness. Um, there are a lot of uh, very old figures off card, sadly, because I played with them like an idiot. Um, <laughs> no, <laughs> well, that's all right, good. fine, all right, fine. But still, yes, they're in there. And then I have uh, tons of gifts from fans. Um, and I actually, I just had a photo op today, and uh, Kanan and Hera came in for a photo op, and he had built a Cal Cory. He had carved it out of wood. I'll post it later. Handed it to me, and it weighs like 900 pounds. He carved it with his hands. I mean, I'm assuming. <laughs> Perhaps there were tools involved, but um, I literally wept. And I, so I have this room with all my uh, action figures that I've collected and, and different posters and stuff like that. And uh, I will add that to my Star Wars room. It's just, when you walk by that room, it's like magic. It's just so powerful. How did it go from being a Star Wars small collection on a table to a Star Wars room? What was oh, the transition? No, there was, it's pretty much been its own wing. Like. <laughs> Yeah, the secret is to find someone who can tolerate that. <laughs> no, you know what I mean? Like, because some people come in like civilians, you know? <laughs> no, <laughs> and they're just like, oh, what is going on? Chewbacca, very good, you know? It's pretty extensive. It, it yeah, um, there are bookshelves and rows. I mean, it's no uh, Rancho Obi-Wan or anything, but oh. it's, it's, it's a start. It's pretty intense. <laughs> Does everybody know Rancho Obi-Wan? Do you guys know Rancho Obi-Wan? It's insane. <laughs> Make, it's, make the it is the world's largest personal collection of Star Wars memorabilia. Steve Sansweet owns it. It's a fantastic place. It's in Petaluma, uh, near uh, Skywalker and such. And it is a great place. And you might hear my voice there. But also, uh, I donated to him my Obi-Wan. So Disney made me a full Obi-Wan Kenobi from season three on replica of Obi-Wan's costume and I wore it at Star Wars Weekends and so I gave it to him so you can see oh, wow. that costume there as well as, but it's an amazing Yeah, place. I lost my mind. I literally yeah. started sobbing. <laughs> like you just, no, you can't even, you need to like take your meds. Like you're He has things that nobody else has. It's, yeah. it's intense, guys. Yeah, it's that's great. awesome. Hi. Hello, my name is Josiah Townsend. I'm hey. from Seattle, Washington. And my question is for the both of you. Um, my question is, what keeps you motivated? Because you're known as Hera and you're known as Obi-Wan, but what keeps you going higher for your careers? Like, what goals do you set for yourself? That's yeah, that's good. Yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting. As I said, I love stories, and I love telling them, and I really felt that Lucas told one of the best stories ever, and it continues on, which makes me happier than anything in the entire world. And I hope that I continue to have anything and everything to do with Lucasfilm and Disney. and. Uh, uh, I am a storyteller, I'm a writer, uh, I would strongly recommend that, that everyone find their voice and I think there's, there's something to that, um, that I think we all have a very special voice, we all deserve to be heard and uh, that is what motivates me and compels me to, to speak out for myself and encourage other people to do the same and I hope that my work does that. That's yeah. awesome. It does, it does indeed. Um, so, uh, 
you know, I'm, like I mentioned, you know, I, I built this podcast and I have a, a YouTube channel and stuff, and I do it because I love inspiring other people. I, I wrote a book that is so called Chat Three Sixty Five Shameless. Get Pro, it? Um, which is I have it every day. Uh, Three hundred sixty five <laughs> daily inspirations for the pursuit of your dreams. Because I'm somebody that you know, at four years old, decided he wanted to be a voice actor. Uh, five foot four, uh, one hundred and fifteen pounds, and I get to be Fred Flintstone and Obi Wan Kenobi. And, <laughs> you know, you'd never guess that. So if I can do this, anybody can. And so I love doing that, and, and I, have a, I have a strong faith, uh, and that faith gets me inspired each day. And so, uh, so in my podcast, I, I go deeper. I, it's called Talking to Myself, and so all the voices are me, and it's me talking to me. In the first episode, I interview Obi-Wan Kenobi, which is great, and I ask him <laughs> questions that nobody else would ever ask him, you know, like, what do you eat, you know, in the Jedi Temple and stuff. And, um, <laughs> But in the middle of it, I get to talk about my life and my faith and how I stay inspired. And so uh, that is not just a shameless plug for my thing. It's, it's to say that I do it because I want to try to inspire other people. And in so doing, I get inspired. So it's all of you that help inspire me because uh, you're wonderful fans. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Great question. Thank and that's you. a great name for a podcast. Yeah. I love well, so, that. So I have a stage show called Talking to Myself that I've taken all over the world. Uh, and uh, in fact, tomorrow, I will be performing it for uh, high fidelity before this con starts in the morning. I will be going and putting on a VR thing, and I will be doing a virtual reality version of my stage show. First time it's ever going to be done. And in that show, I do about 200 voices, and I talk about my life as a voice actor. And, uh, but you can watch it. Go to highfidelity.com. You can register for free. And you don't need a VR set to watch it. But I will turn into my characters tomorrow. And then they have a virtual gene. That is set. awesome. It's weird, so check it out. Yeah. That is going to be awesome. Hi. Hi. I'm Dean from the Bay Area, actually. Uh, first off, I'm, sep I'm 17 turning 18, which means I'm just as old as you voicing Obi-Wan. That if you <laughs> like, it wow. puts your life into perspective. It does. <laughs> Oh, uh, my question is actually for you. Uh, what is your favorite story of, uh, if I'm pronouncing this right, Ian Abercrombie? Oh, Ian. So Ian Abercrombie played the Emperor on most of the seasons of The Clone Wars. And Ian also, you may know him from Seinfeld. He was Mr. Pitt, yeah. you know, on, on Seinfeld. Elaine, these socks don't fit. You know, he was just, he was fantastic. He was one of the sweetest people in the world. And then, of course, he was Palpatine in The Emperor, so he was evil, right? But, and he would joke, he'd say, I'm sorry I'm so evil to you. You know, he'd be like, no. <laughs> he loved crazy socks. So he would wear these really wild colored socks in the studio and stuff. And we'd come in, Catherine Tabor and I would come in and we'd sit and talk to Ian. And he would just tell us these stories about where he got the socks in different places in the world. And, you know, just, just funny things. So he was just one of the happiest, sweetest people. He was so grateful for his work. And he was such a sweet man. And then he'd walk into that studio and he'd say, Anakin, you don't need to do this evil voice and manipulate Anakin. And, and we'd always give him a bad time because it's like, you're a teddy bear, come on. He was a lovely man and it was, it was devastating. And then Tim Curry took over for him and he did a fantastic job as well. So we've been blessed with a lot of great Palpatines on, on the Clone Wars, but Ian was, was wonderful. Thank you for mentioning him. Thank you. Hi. Hi, my name is Will Morgan and I'm from Olala. And I'm wondering, what do you think is the most important skill to be a voice actor? That's a good question. Well, I learned from June Foray to get to all your jobs an hour early. So that was, that was a, a good one. I, I usually don't get there an hour early because I don't want to look too overzealous. I think it looks cool if June Foray does it, but if I do it, it might be like, uh, did you get the time wrong? But there's something to be said for being on time and being professional. Um, and of course, there are a million other tips, but... Uh, if you are ever fortunate enough to be blessed to be a voice actor, uh, say a little prayer of thanks, no matter what you believe, um, that you're in that booth on that microphone. Every time I'm holding one of these or in front of one of these, I'm just so grateful. So uh, I always try to be as happy and willing to do whatever. Voice actors don't care if we get line readings. Most actors don't like the line readings. A line reading is... You're doing the line and the director says, no, no, we did like this. We usually kind of go, okay, whatever, man. So, because we're happy to be there. So be grateful be, and no other voice actors. Go online, study and watch the movie I Know That Voice or just listen to Rob Paulson's Talking Tunes or my podcast and learn as much as you can about voiceover. 
like greats like Frank Welker or Corey Burton or Jim Cummings or Billy West or Maurice LaMarche or Rob Paulson or Tress McNeil or on and on and on. These people are fantastic and they're the most humble, wonderful people ever. And so we try to just kind of go in and be somewhat near to what they did. Yeah. I mean, one other sort of practical thing, a D. Bradley Baker, yeah. who's every clone ever, right? Every clone, <laughs> voice of every clone, but also the Geonosian yeah. Queen. Yes, remember that uh, episode? He that was, was awesome. Bosk. He's, yeah. he's actually, D is actually more characters than anyone on the Clone Wars. He played, if you look on IMDb, he played more people than anybody. Well, he has a website and it's called IWantToBeAVoiceActor.com and every question you can think of is answered there because everyone kept asking him that same question and so yeah. whenever I am curious about stuff, I go there. I want to be a, yeah, no, yeah, really. And I, I mean, I do it for a living, but I, we can always learn. And that, that's also to have the humility to, to be a perpetual student is also a good thing. But I want to be a voice actor dot com is great. That's great advice. And, and James, you also gave some great advice earlier when you were talking about how you got started. You went in and to a radio station. You're just, what can I do? Thanks for picking up on that. That's actually what I try, try to let people know. And I try to tell my daughter, who's 14, it's like, just watch. You will pick up so much by watching. I would sit in the room, I would talk to the DJs, I would watch what they do, and within a month I knew how to work the equipment. And I just started doing it. So if you watch as much as you can, go to my YouTube channel and watch. I have a bunch of videos of me just doing sessions because I feel like it's important for you to just see how it works, how it happens. See how far away we are from the microphone, what we do with our hands, what clothes we wear. Because these, like this shirt, I can't wear this shirt when I do voiceover, it's too loud. Yeah, so there's so many little intricacies in it. Thank you, and good luck to you. Thank you. Hi. Hi, I'm Monica from Kent. And first I have a comment, well for James, then my question and comment is for James. Uh, um, sorry, I'm really nervous. That's okay. Um, um, part of the reason why um, I watched the film, I've, I fell in love with, I liked Star Wars back in like elementary school and everything, but was never like really tuned to it. And then I watched the Clone Wars and part of, um, Part of why, and it's part of why I fell in love with stars again, and my a major part of it was um, your portrayal of Obi Wan. So oh, thank, thank you. you, thank you so much. <laughs> That's very very sweet. And my question is, um, one of the one of the video game series my brother and I played growing up was the Ratchet and Clank series, Yay. and I just yeah, thank you. And I was You're just wondering what that experience was like. Wow, well, Ratchet, so um, I've done Ratchet for 17 years and I've done, uh, I think, 17 different video games as Ratchet. Mm -hmm. And then we had a movie, Ratchet and Clank the movie, which nobody went and saw. But, um, <laughs> dang it. Uh, but uh, Vanessa and I both have worked yeah, at Ratchet. Yeah, I played Pepper Potts in uh, that. I was the news reporter. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. my god. Yeah. I'm sorry. Which I didn't like, recognize oh, that. No, I forget half the things I've done. That's <laughs> the whole thing with voice actors. You yeah. wouldn't know if we do our job right. You don't know, yeah, necessarily. Yeah. But Ratchet is a great, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, it's just funny because my dad is a news reporter, so I was basically just imitating him <laughs> as a backstory, but go on. That's funny, I didn't know that. So Ratchet is great because he's this Lombax, and there's only one of them, and uh, he's got big ears, and he's a little guy that wants to do the right thing, and I'm like, okay, I relate to this guy, he's happening. Um, and uh, he, it's just always been a great experience. TJ Fixman was the writer that did most of the uh, games, and, and he and I just had a great connection. And Jim Ward as, Captain Quirk, you know, and uh, and David Kay as a oh, ratchet as Clank, um, were just fabulous to work with. Although a little, very quickly, I met David after six games. We finally met, and it was just because we were so video games. You're never in the studio with the other actors. You're always alone. But animated shows, you're usually together. So yeah, we finally met after doing six six different titles together. So, but it was a wonderful franchise. I hope they bring it back again. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Hi. Hi, I'm Anthony Cassini. I'm 11 years old. My question for you is, both of you, uh, if you were to reshoot any episode of Star Wars Rebels, which one would you reshoot? Hmm. I wouldn't touch any of them. <laughs> I really wouldn't. I, I don't have any, yeah. any moments that were un... I, I just, yeah, I, it was so poetic. I, I, and that's not speaking about me. I'm saying what you know, Dave Filoni and his whole team did. I, I can't think of a single thing I would change. Yeah. You're not a Lucas plant, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Dave Filoni, no, yeah, we would never dare touch it. No, um, but you know why we would, we would redo it? Only because we love it so much. 
So what's, yeah, is there a scene that you would love to just, that you could well, have done more of my takes? If I could have done that scene with Billy D. Williams and actually, you know, I mean, you get to punch Billy D. Williams, that's kind of crazy. And then plus at the end when Hera says, well, you're gonna owe me, you know, that's when Freddie and I looked at each other and we thought about Cloud City and we thought maybe that's why he ended up helping the Rebel Alliance. Well, you know, we'll never know, but in that moment it felt like the cartoon was connected to a film I saw long, long ago, you know, but, uh, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, and for me, well, you know, Clone Wars, um, I loved the Mortis arc that we did. And I loved getting to actually do that. You are my brother, Anakin, you know, all that stuff. And uh, it was just fun. Yeah, so probably that. Thank you. Hi. Hello. I'm Dylan from Seattle. And uh, I have a question for both of you. Do either of you have any characters that you've never gotten the opportunity to voice uh, in Star Wars that you think you'd have a really good time voicing? Or I'll even add to your question, and any other property. Is there a game sure. or a certain you know group you'd like to work with? Oh, we'd be a good Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru, wouldn't we? Yeah. Yeah. Right? <laughs> sure. I'll get the blue milk, I got you. Beru, where are my socks? <laughs> <laughs> I have always wanted to play Jean Grey. Uh, oh. And I came really close in the Wolverine. You're so perfect for that. I know! <laughs> well, you, I mean, you are perfect I know, for that. with the red hair, well, uh, oh well. Anyway, that's sort of like a, a cotton, oh, never mind, yeah. It's just never, well, one time I read her one line in the uh, first episode of the Wolverine series uh, with Steve Bloom as uh, Wolverine that uh, was out. I'm, I signed a DVD of it uh, yesterday, I think it was. <laughs> it's all a blur. But, um, yeah, they had me read her line. It was the last line in the episode. And I thought I had just been awarded. I was there to play Vertigo, who was a mad sci scientist or something like that. And then uh, the Jean Grey had the final line. And then they cast Jennifer Hale, which, God bless, if anyone's going to yeah. play Jean Grey, let's have Jennifer Hale do it, because come on, man. Um, I love her to death. So um, anyway, came close, but you never know. So someday, maybe. Ooh, uh, to tack on to that in the X-Men world, Nightcrawler was always my favorite character as a, as a kid in the X-Men, and I would have loved it though. But D. Bradley Baker, come on, because D actually yeah. speaks German. German. And so, do you know uh, the fish he plays on uh, American Dad, Klaus, is it Klaus the fish? They originally wanted him to be French. And they were like, hey, he's gotta be French, French, French. And D went, I don't do French, I do German. And he went in and auditioned and just did this whole thing that was unlike anything anybody else was doing. Yeah. So I say that also to all of you that want to be voice actors. Take a chance sometimes on auditions or doing things and characters that you're comfortable with that are different than everybody else and you might just get the job. That's really good advice and a great story. All right, hi, yeah, thank you. And now we'll go over here, hi. Hi. Um, Anakin. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm Alicia, I'm from Vancouver, BC. Um, the last question is very similar to mine, so I'm just thinking up one on the top of my head. Uh, this one's for Obi-Wan. Yes. What are your thoughts with my relation with, relationship with Padme? <laughs> I, I don't know what you mean. It seems Good as though they're just friends, right? <laughs> <laughs> you must be using a Jedi mind trick on me, because I'd have to be a complete idiot to not see what's going on. <laughs> No, um, yeah, isn't that great? It's, it's so fun. I do actually wonder how the Force works on that. How, how did nobody see, how did Yoda not see this? Come on, they had to have known, right? There has to be some. And they're kind of going, well, we're letting it slide. We know it's happening. We're gonna. But there was that wonderful moment in Clone Wars where Obi-Wan got to talk to Anakin in, what was it, season five, I think. Um, or season six, was it season, the Lost Missions? I don't remember now. Six. Where he has a talk with Anakin that says, you know, you know what my feelings for the team. And he, you know, he's, he knows, but he's just never really coming out and saying it. So, yeah. Oh, Anakin. <laughs> Thank you. James, it seems like being a voice actor is a very specific, you know, career and goal. And you said you, you had that goal since you were four. How did you even know, in all seriousness, that a voice actor existed? at that age? Uh, it's, 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 it's a funny story. I'll try to do the short version. One was, at first I wanted to be a doctor because my mom worked at a hospital and so she got me the whole doctor's outfit. There was this accident downstairs uh, from our, we lived in an apartment and I, the guy wiped out on his motorcycle, nothing serious, he was fine. But I grabbed my gear, my doctor's bag and everything. I ran down there and pushed my way through the crowd. See my baby book, it's a true story, honestly. And I looked at the guy and I said, I'd like to help you, but I'm an obstetrician. 
And, <laughs> and that's what everybody did. They laughed. And I went, okay, my mom said, well, if you're going to be a doctor, you got to help anybody anytime. I said, well, I made them laugh. I'll be a comedian. And then uh, within a few days, I was watching cartoons. And I went, this guy. So, you know, Mel Blanc, one person. And, and you know, my mom's explaining, it's one guy doing those voices. I want that job, yeah. And so I just naturally uh, just went to it. Strange offshoot of it. I never knew who my father was uh, growing up, and um, I found out at 42, the person I thought was my father my whole life was not. And my real father did what I do for a living. Uh, he worked in voice, and he was a TV host, and uh, so I didn't know it, but it was kind of in my genes, I guess. It was in your blood. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, thank you for sharing that. Hi. Hi. My name is Lauren. I'm from Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. I love Star Wars Rebels, and Clone Wars it means so much to me, the whole world kind of changed my life. Us too. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm just wondering if you guys have a favorite moment from each of your time working with the Star Wars animated shows. Well, I really love the episode where Hera flies the B-Wing. Um, that was a special episode. Yeah, and she, she explains the value of flight. Um, my dad is a pilot, and he has very special friends and um, out at the airport, and it's just, it, it meant a lot to me personally. I sort of dedicated that scene in my mind to my father and um, his spiritual need for flight. Uh, it felt like that was a nice reveal for Hera's character, and then plus it's a B-wing, so there's that. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Um, gosh, uh, again, those those moments with Satine were always great. I will say, you know, my favorite character is Ahsoka Tano. Um, and not just because Ashley is just an amazing person and she brought so much to it. What I love about it is it's also the proof of Star Wars fans. We all kind of rolled our eyes at first. Oh, it's a kid, pat on for Anakin, ah, that's great. You know, and then you go, by the end, everybody needs to know what happened to Ahsoka. This character is so powerful now in, in our hearts and minds, and so uh, working with, with Ashley on those episodes, you know, especially later on, there were times where they actually kicked us all out of the room, and it was just Matt and Ashley when they wouldn't let us know what was going to happen in the storylines and stuff. So I am as much of a fan as all of you, and I wanted to know, so I couldn't wait to watch it all. So those episodes were some of my favorites that I wasn't involved in, I would say, yeah. That's so great to hear that you you're right there with the fan base. Yeah, just just in it to win it. One um, moment that I wasn't in that I loved is when Ahsoka left the Jedi Order. I'll never forget that moment. That, exactly. Yeah. Really yeah. to all of us. All of us, like on the floor crying. Totally. Yeah. Thank you so much. A lot of times you have the question for on camera, you know, how much improv, improv is, is happening in front of the camera. How about you guys? Are you guys allowed to improv after you've gotten what's been written, or how does it work? Yeah, um, certainly uh, Dave Filoni, the supervising director of both, both of our shows, um, was always fantastic at saying, I don't know, am I missing something here? You know, go ahead, how do you feel about it? Uh -huh. I'm, do I'm doing my, I'm halfway doing my, okay, just uh, James, uh, it's kind of like David Spade. And you are Obi who? Okay, yeah, bye bye. Um, but Dave would always give us that opportunity to kind of take it in place, especially Obi Wan and Anakin together. You know, are we going to change that up? But yeah, there there is freedom. There's different shows that we do where you get more freedom. I think Guardians we have probably a little more freedom oh. to play with things. Guardians but, was bananas. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just put it that way. I mean, we were bananas. I, first of all, I catered like practically every session. <laughs> I would order, guys, if you're gonna go in, do it. I would get Carnegie, De or no, uh, Katz's Deli from New York, or um, the Chicago Pizza Giordano's. Like, we had so much fun, you guys, it was crazy. Yeah, yeah and, uh, and so we would, we, I would be breakdancing, Kevin Michael Richardson oh, yeah. played Groot, and he would beatbox, and then I would be on the floor like rerun, you probably don't know who that is, but Google it, it's worth it. Um, yeah, like, da -da 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 -da, doing like all this locking and popping, and then the director would be like, you guys! I mean, we basically were the guardians of the galaxy, like a bunch of yeah. idiots. Yeah. And uh, we had so much fun. Uh, yeah, anyway. Yeah, but no, so there is, there is a chance to improvise, but usually it's after a few takes. Right, yeah, that makes sense. Did you ever meet Michael Rooker? Yeah, yeah, okay, I mean, so great story, Michael Rooker. I shared this yesterday, but so I'm, so I'm the voice of Yondu on Guardians of the Galaxy, the animated series, and so I'm, exactly like I'm sitting in a, 
in a car at a con in Salt Lake City, and Michael's in the back seat. And the driver goes, James, did you tell Michael who you are? And I'm like, no. <laughs> because, you know, sometimes people don't like it when you do their voice. And so he's like, who are you? Who are you? You know, and I said, oh, I play Yondu in the cartoon. Do, do my voice. Let me hear it. So I say, okay, what do you want me to say? He goes, no, that, no, that's no good. No, do it like this. So he starts training me how to do Yanni, which was so awesome. And then afterwards, we get out of the car. He's like, we got to get a picture together. And so we got a picture, and, and he goes, we both need to be wearing sunglasses. So he goes, you don't have any sunglasses. So he takes his wife's sunglasses and puts them on. And he's got his. And then we both have to point to the camera. Like, and he was like, do another one. Do another one. That wasn't right. Okay. He was just the nicest guy in the world. He's the best yeah. in the world. I mean, I, and I just think you guys are the perfect. Now that I know you're Yondu and he's Yondu, I just love it. Oh, awesome. thank you. Hi. Um, hello. So I'm uh, Rowan, and I'm from Seattle. And my question is, um, so basically, when going to the Star, uh, Star Wars The Clone Wars, um, um, so coming off of the prequels, I'm just wondering what were the pressures of that show when you were going through it? What was it originally supposed to be? And then what over time did it become after you kind of like realized your bounds and could like kind of play around with it? Man, that's a great question that nobody has ever asked. Um, there is, as actors, and Vanessa can certainly attest to this too, the pressure you have when you're playing a character or you're doing something, but especially something, as you mentioned, that has been done before and you're filling somebody's shoes. The greatest thing that ever happened for all of us as a cast was Dave Filoni and George Lucas saying, don't worry about it. You don't need to sound exactly like them, do exactly what they did. You know, because I spent all these years before that copying everything that you had done. So every line was a reference off of something he did in the films. And if he didn't do it, I'd say, well, it's kind of like that. And I would try to make it like that. So this, they said, pressure's off. You know, and at the time, when it was just George Lucas' Star Wars, they said, Ewan's never going to play Obi-Wan Kenobi again. Well, I hope he's wrong now, right? I hope we can say that. Um, and of course, Alec Guinness isn't going to, but so you're Obi-Wan. And they said the same for Matt. And they said, you know, for Padme and for all these characters. So the pressure was off of us, but we still felt it just because we're both fans and we're all fans of this. You put that pressure on. I'm sure it was for, even with Rebels, you guys felt that pressure of being in between what? You're in between three and four. So we're in between two and three. It's very confusing, all these numbers. The timeline is confusing. Yeah. But, um, so yeah, there was a lot of pressure, but it was also, I, what I would do, the quick answer, even though I've given you too long of an answer already, is I wouldn't watch Revenge of the Sith. The whole time we made Clone Wars, which was a long time, because uh, we made it for two years before it ever even came out, too. So we started in 2004, 2005. And I purposely would never watch Revenge of the Sith because I thought, that's not my Obi-Wan. He hasn't gotten to that point yet. I might watch some of the beginning, you know, but never the end. Thank you. Hi. Hi, my name is Lila, and I'm from Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. My question to you today is, what was your experience of first watching Star Wars? It's a great question. Well, I was uh, in Colorado for the summer, and uh, I was an only child. My parents would deposit me with uh, her family there. My parents are from Boulder, Colorado originally, so I was with my aunt and my cousins, and she said, I'm taking you to see this movie. It's a space opera, and, and we were like, what? You know, we didn't want a space opera. And from the minute the music began at, and the Star Destroyer, I mean, that was it. I was I was hooked right then and there. And uh, then I got to know Princess Leia and I was done. That was it. I, I found my genre. <laughs> you found a new hope. I did indeed. <laughs> I had to go there. See? I um, love it. Do you remember your first uh, yeah, oh, vividly, introduction? Vividly. Uh, I was seven years old. And I saw it in a drive-in movie theater in San Jose, California. And I, I remember my first thoughts was, after seeing this movie, unlike all the other 2001 and Logan's Run and all these, I thought, space is so dirty. <laughs> because it is, and that was the cool thing about it. That's what made it real. It was like, you know, the Millennium Falcon was a mess. Everybody was a mess, it was dirt and grime. And I was like, wow, this is real. Now we're in space, this is really what it would be like. And I was so taken by it. So I used to play Star Wars. Yeah, by the time, once, once I was seven, that's it. I played Star Wars. I always, you know, I always tried to be on Solo, but uh, I didn't know I was going to be the old man. You know, the old man. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I loved it. That's great. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Hi. 
Uh, hi, uh, I'm Benjamin from Bellevue, Washington, and I was wondering what was your reaction when you heard that they were going to make a new season of Clone Wars? <laughs> I actually I thank Dave Filoni. I said our country needs this right now. <laughs> I can go on. Now I can breathe. <laughs> I literally said those exact sentences. You can ask him. He was like, I wouldn't go that far. And I said, uh, no, seriously, thank you, my friend. Yeah. Um, so I, I've been very fortunate, and Vanessa and I both have been fortunate to do voices in the movies as well, the Star Wars films that have been out, um, Solo and The Last Jedi and Force Awakens and Rogue One. And, uh, we were doing voices for Solo at the time, and Matthew Wood, who is General Grievous, and the battle droids, Roger, Roger, and all that, and also the sound designer for all the films, uh, pulled me aside and he said, you know what they're talking about? Bringing Clone Wars back. I'm like, get out of here. And then within the week, my agent called and said, they're bringing you guys back. So that was in February of last year, and then it was announced in July. So again, welcome to our NDA world where we can't talk about anything. And so uh, it was very exciting once, once we could talk about it. And now once it's on, then we can talk about it again. Then you can talk more. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. Hey. I'm Xander from Portland. And what would your best advice be to an aspiring voice actor who doesn't even know where to start in the game? They've got no professional, previous professional experience. Well, I mean, as Vanessa said, uh, Dee Bradley Baker's website, but also Yuri Lowenthal and Tara Platt, who are husband and wife voiceover team. They wrote a book called Voiceover Voice Actor, voiceovervoiceactor.com. You can check all that out. It is a manual for voiceover. It's really going to give you the ability to take in all that information, know the phraseologies we use and all the stuff. It's a great resource, as well as Dee's site, uh, as well as you know, watching stuff on my YouTube channel and other places. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah, other thoughts? I, I echo that as well, definitely. I would just start taking classes, uh, search for classes in your area, and uh, put together a demo. And it's just sort of one thing leads to another, and it's an ongoing journey. It's worth it. Read out loud. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. One last thing. Read comic books out loud. Read Dr. Seuss out loud. Pick up things and just start reading it out loud. Get used to hearing yourself. Record yourself. Get used to your own voice. Because everybody else, is when you hear your voice and you're like, oh, why is it so high? Because we all hear ourselves deeper than we hear. You know, so to me right now, I sound like this. I sound fantastic. <laughs> but I know you guys all hear me like this. So get used to hearing your own voice, okay? And then read as much as you can out loud. That's great advice. Thank you. And good luck to you. All right, we have a few more people. Let's try to get through the last four. We have about four minutes, so that should work out. Hi. Hi, my name is Heather. I'm from Seattle. Um, this question is for Vanessa. Yeah, so you voiced Tara on Rebels, and you also voiced mm -hmm. Jan, or Jan Oris on yeah. Today Outcast. I just was wondering what you thought about the similarities between those two characters, and if you ever made a connection um, between them. Um, God, that's a great question. They, they are very similar, aren't they? I hadn't really thought about that. <laughs> Yeah, I couldn't believe it. I booked that uh, game. Uh, that was a million years ago. And um, that was another thing. It's almost like seeing Lando or like I saw Phasma in the green room earlier. I, I just like, I, anything Lucasfilm related, I sort of, my brain kind of fritzes out. I'm just nerding for a minute. Um, but uh, yeah, that, that is a, a wonderful thing to think about. I didn't even, I never, I never put that together. Two pilots, I mean, yeah, they are a lot alike. The sad thing is, uh, my boyfriend at the time, unfortunately it didn't work out, and he was a huge gamer, and he's like, you would have to beat Janors. <laughs> it's like, I'm supposed to keep you alive through the whole game. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, dude. Sorry. Thank you. Anyway. Hi. I'm Jonathan from Dana Point, California. Yeah. And did you, by any chance, ever think, ever think that Jar Jar Binks is a Sith Lord? Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, I've heard this theory. Uh, yeah, I have a bad feeling about that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, he probably was, huh? I don't know. You know, I mean, I will say this. Clone Wars made Jar Jar a, a lot cooler, I think, too, yeah. because it gave him these storylines that we had not seen before. Right. That was really neat. Um, but you know what? The more I see on that theory, I go, man, there's something to it. They, That's interesting. It's yeah. pretty good. Do you guys know this theory that Jar Jar Binks is a single? Yeah. It's pretty cool, yeah. Thank you. Great question. Hi. Hi, I'm Noah from Salem, Oregon. I would like to ask, what's your favorite vehicle in the Star Wars universe and the scene that it's portrayed in? Favorite vehicle? 
Yeah, that's a, that, I haven't heard that I question know. before. Go ahead. You think about it. Uh, the, the sand speeder, the Luke's oh, it's gonna, speeder. Yeah. Uh, because it, it was the crazy, first thing right? that I saw, yeah. you know, as a kid, so it is stuck, it is embedded in me as the coolest thing in the world because there's no wheels and it just goes and it's so cool looking. So yeah, I love that. I still love that. Uh, Slate One is pretty darn cool too, though. Yeah, the, the, you're, he's naming my face. <laughs> yeah, of course, I got I to represent the ghost. You know? and, and I bow down to the falcon, so there's that. Always. It's really tough to choose, you know? How about you? What's your favorite? AT-AT. Oh. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And our last question. Hi. Hi, my name is Ed from Victoria, BC. And my question for the both of you, with the new Clone Wars um, still in production, what are your hopes for your characters? Oh, <laughs> oh well. I hope well that Anakin is the chosen one, and he <laughs> defeats the Sith, and um, we all live happily ever after, right? <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know where Hera would be in that, but I know as a fangirl, I'm going to be glued to the television the moment it's released. That's a that's a binge watch if I ever saw one. Um, I'm getting the Disney app as soon as it comes yeah. out, and I'll watch it over and over and over again. Yeah, we all have to get it, too. I mean, we're all going to get the Disney app so we can watch it, too. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank and you. thank you guys so much. You guys are amazing. Oh, it's, it's been such great advice and, and insights, and we really enjoyed it. So, one more big round of applause, please, for James and Vanessa. <laughs> to swing by the third floor and visit them. At this time, though, please gather all of your belongings and exit out the doors as this concludes our day at the main stage, day two, Emerald City Comic Con. Thank you. Good night, everybody. <laughs>